Now that we have access to all these uh, parts here, rollers and uh, rollers and everything else, it's a good chance to lubricate some stuff. And I will start with uh, this roller here. A screw here for this roller, and it also has a washer. Be careful that it doesn't fall inside. We can move this spring here to the side and slide this roller out. Okay, let's see. Think I can I can apply all to that roller here without too much effort. Um, it would be better if I have the machine just lying down like that somehow. I spilled some oil. I spilled some oil on the roller that has to be cleaned. We don't want to have a slippery. This is fairly easy to move. It 
doesn't move very freely this roller. And it makes noise. Even if I try, even if I try to pull it out, that thing is this here. This roller is not in good shape. It has cracks. If I, I, I might have to move, take out uh, this. Uh, I will go and bring more tools. So I brought some tools with me, uh, that kind of tools that I can work with uh, seal clips and I will take out <laughs> yeah. I will take out a seal clip here There it is There is a plastic washer underneath here and then there is also a spring holding it there let me use these the tweezers here to take out that spring and then I have that thing here and uh, I hope I can uh, lubricate it because it's making some kind of noise so I will use my and I will try and take out that seal clip got it out and I will take out that whole thing be careful there are many washers around here and Finally, oil this also. There you are. There it is. It doesn't make any noise. Now I can apply some lubricant. Also here. And I think finally. Finally, this is perfectly lubricated. Uh, I will put the spring there. Uh, you can't see it, but I will take a picture, a picture of it now, so that I can.
I can show you later on the video exactly how it is. And then that a, a plastic washer on top. Okay, I found my circlip opener here. must be able to move a little bit and now that is moving without a noise anymore now I have this here that I have to put in That thing has some holes. I guess these holes are to apply oil. But now that I have it out, I will apply it directly. There we are. And then we have. this thing. I will apply some grease on top of it. Just like that. And now I'm gonna put back the screw that it had above. Next thing to do is take out this flywheel. We can take it out now, but be careful as you take it out because from the other side there is a there is a rubber washer. Rubber, yeah. This this washer here. So as you pull it out, it will fall back on the other side. You have to see it before you pull it out. So I will apply some oil here and I will apply some grease on the bottom here because that thing slides on there. So some fresh grease. will do some good I guess and this goes back in there so now I will do the motor it's time to do the motor because as I said it's uh, it feels very stiff and uh, I will uh, lubricate it and then I will have to put a belt from the motor to this uh, idler. Um, I don't have the original. I, I had some pieces of the original belt, which was a triangle belt. Of course, nowadays 
uh, we cannot find triangle belts, but uh, it was in pieces and uh, I don't know the original size of it. I have a bunch of belts here and I will pick uh, some and do some iterations. I don't, I don't have any other solution. So, uh, ah, first, not to forget. That, uh, that wheel here is on a, on a certain height and uh, it has uh, to be aligned with uh, this idler here. Uh, so we have to measure the height where it is now to put it then at the same height, hoping that this will be the correct height. We might have to realign it again but uh, it's 5.9, so 6 about millimeters because then we will have to take it out to be able to take the rotor out of this uh, motor. screws here also have washers so we should try not to lose them That screw here is playing it hard. I will get a bigger screwdriver. Okay, and now I think it will surrender. Three screws on the back of on the motor of, on the back of the motor. Okay. And three washers with them. So don't forget and don't use them. So that screw also has um, something that holds the cables. I will leave this as it is. And now we can take out all this. Okay. The cover of the motor is out. Next thing we should do is uh, we should uh, take out that wheel at the front that we measured the height of it and this slides out just like that oh <laughs> the height was fixed it, it, it wasn't this it wasn't the axis that wasn't that was part of the wheel so actually I didn't measure it and I have to search it afterwards so after doing that we can see that the motor is loose here I hope you can see it There we are. And now now I will try to take the stator out. To take out the stator we have one screw on each side 
it's uh, with nuts on the front is a screw on the back is a nut so we just take out the nut take out the screw okay one side is out the other side side is also out the nut should also come out and now I can just slide this out okay, you can see that here and slide also the other side out and here we have the rotor out, which slides out just like that. Okay, I will bring some things to be able to clean stuff. These parts here will be cleaned and I will put grease at the bottom that thing sliding in there which made it stiff so that part here was stiff so new cleaning like that There is a small ball here, so be careful not to lose it. I don't know if it goes out, but if it goes out, we should be careful not to lose it. And clean it all the way like that. Then I will put some oil on the axis here. I will like this in there. Ooh. And now it's extremely nice. I will put some grease. I will put some grease on the bottom of this part here. And I will put some oil around it. And then, no, first, first I have to put this through the stator, just like that. I don't remember exactly how it was, but I think it was like that.
motor is now very very light it works perfectly I will go and check the video just to be sure I put put it back uh, the exact way it was before and then I, and I will come back Okay, uh, don't do it like me, pay attention which side is where. Actually, uh, the cable goes to the front side of the motor, which is here, and uh, that part is near the letters here. Okay, it's just like that. Uh, if I didn't have the video, I wouldn't be able to figure out how to put it back. So it's good that I had the video anyway. The other screw. Okay, before tightening uh, these screws, be sure to turn the motor just like that and uh, be sure that uh, you don't hear any noise so that nothing is uh, touching anything. Okay, the motor now turns very freely. Before it was really stiff. So I definitely did a, a good job here. So now I will tighten the two, these two screws. I think we're okay. Now we put it back here. Just like that. There is a rubber piece which is square shaped and it goes in another square uh, hole from the other side. And then we have the other cover which has another square and the motor gets into that square and we have the three screws there one I will just tighten it a little bit with the hand just like that. two which is here and three which is here Okay, this is my screwdriver. Don't secure one screw at a time. Just screw them in until they are still loose, all three of them. And then just screw it a little bit, one by one. Just a little bit here. A little bit here little bit here and then tighter okay
Okay, now I'm gonna have to do what I did wrong before, and I'm gonna have to, to just remember where this was, but maybe there is some excess oil in the axis here. Anyway, and now I'm gonna have to tighten the screw here to keep this on the correct height and I did measure this that was a stupid thing to do I measured I had to measure the distance of it from this body of uh, the motor okay wow extremely light is now the motor so now that we have everything uh, lubricated I um, will put the motor back uh, that won't be very easy I'm sure it won't be very easy but let's see that thing was on this side, just like that, and it would slide there and there. And that thing was there, that thing was there, okay. Let's see if I manage to do it. There is it. So, after doing all this on the motor, uh, I think it's a good chance to measure the motor capacitor and see if it is within range. To do that, we have to desolder it. So, I will desolder that blue wire here. Come on. Okay. Now the capacitor is loose and I can measure the capacity which is uh, which is 8.5 microfarads. So let's see. It's 8.61, so it's uh, very well within uh, range. Uh, I'm not sure if you could see that on the camera, but it is fine. I don't have to worry about it now. I will uh, solder the wire again. Okay, I will stop the camera because now I have to go and bring a wet towel to clean my solder iron. So, the four screws that we saw, one, two, three, four, pay attention that this is inserted on the back side of this black plastic thing and this here is inserted on the front side. Uh, this I think ah uh, pay attention where my ah uh, that that here is inserted on this and that is inserted on this slider and the other side here is inserted on the other side of the slider and this spring is put there when we have finished all this, we must try and see if the mechanism worked, worked correctly. And if we did everything right, that should go as planned. That's it. Well, um, 
I will be honest, uh, after all this effort, I managed to arrange uh, the mechanical part of uh, this thing. Uh, let me show you how it goes. Okay. That doesn't stick here. It's, it sticks on the other side, but it doesn't stick here. I will arrange this later. But as you can see, mechanically, that thing now it's uh, okay. Maybe it's not perfect because of that thing, but it works. Okay. This is slower. This is slower. Right? And this is the extremely slow, which is like that. Okay. So it goes quickly like that. It doesn't stick. That thing doesn't stick. Uh, I will look for it. It sticks the other way around and at the end it stops by itself. It didn't. I think it should, but anyway. Okay, this stuff I will arrange after I arrange another problem, which is that uh, this machine doesn't give audio output. I don't know why I tried all this. I got some audio, I think, here or here, but normally the audio output should be here on this uh, stereo thing. But I had no output. I did everything I could with all these knobs and everything. I didn't, I didn't get it to work correctly. So I have to mess with the electronics of it. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do now. After I finish the electronics and I see that everything is sorted out and I have normal audio, then I will try and see if I can fix that thing but now I don't I don't consider this a problem because without audio output uh, there is no point of trying to fix this I wanted to to fix the mechanical part so be, that I know that that thing works but uh, okay so uh, I, I did some uh, research with the service manual of uh, this and I made some uh, notes on the service manual myself uh, that uh, would uh, help me That this work okay anyway uh, I made some notes on the service manual that will help me find out the where the problem is so I not I I made a note on the service manual where I should measure for voltages and uh, where should I go so that I I trace the the signal I don't know, I, uh, the VU meters of this uh, is... I don't, I don't know what's the problem with it, I will search for it. So, that modified service manual with all my notes on, uh, I have a link for it on the description of the video so you can download it. Okay, now I will move on with the electronics when I have time.